Hello, hello, I'm Jo, and welcome to the video. My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. From the ages of 6 to 16, this show was my life. From the moment I finished the first episode and the moment my mother brought home some plastic horses for me, I was hooked. I remember recording all the episodes I could and re-watching them a million times. My mom told me that I would spend hours sitting at our kitchen counter drawing my favorite characters over and over again. And whenever I hit 11 years old and I thought, ah, the fixation is finally burning out. Boom! Yum soda! My little pony collecting addiction! Side note, making this video actually got me back into My Little Pony G4 collecting, but that's not what the video's about. I mean, y'all read the title. Today, we're not exactly going to be discussing the main series, we're going to be revisiting and redesigning the Equestria Girls characters, specifically part of the main six. Sorry, Sunset Shimmer. It may come as no surprise to you to know I was a huge fan of these movies whenever they first came out. I wasn't as into it as I was the main series, but the concept and the merchandise for it was just... Oh, it was just so cool to my tiny little nine-year-old brain. But after revisiting them in my old and wise age, I have realized... They're... They're not the best. In fact, dare I say... They're kind of bad. Which is awful, because Equestria Girls really had the potential to be something really good. But from the movies themselves to the actual toys that Hasbro made for this series, and don't even get me started on those, it's very obvious that not as much love and care was put into these films. And so, while I'm not going to be completely rewriting and rethinking everything about the movies, I'm going to be looking at the characters and making some changes to their designs because I feel like I can at least help those. And lord do they need help. So let me talk about the changes that I want to make just, just real quick. Before I started drawing any of the characters for this video, I lined up all of the main six side by side and I stared at them for like 10 minutes. I took mental notes of what I thought worked in their designs, what I thought didn't, and I wanted to use this sheet as a complete guideline whenever I was planning the characters. I, I wanted to. But I ended up just kind of using this sheet as a last resort if I was feeling like stuck with the design. Originally, I wanted these redesigns to look as if they could fit right back into the Equestria Girls movies. But when I started drawing, I realized that that idea was not as fun as I thought it was going to be. So instead of that goal, these redesigns are going to be me looking at the original character and thinking about what they would look like if I met them in real life. So there's going to be modern day fashion, I'm going to be changing the skin tones and the body types of the characters, just all the things, you'll see. With all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the first redesign. The first character I'm redesigning is Fluttershy. Fluttershy. I love her to death. She wasn't really my favorite character growing up. I was more of a Rainbow Dash girly, you know? But during the 2020 quarantine, I decided to rewatch the show and just... Oh my gosh, I fell in love with her. She went from being my least appreciated to my most beloved character and... It's so funny, the amount of merchandise I have for her compared to the rest of the main six is... Ooh, it's a little ridiculous. Okay, time to talk about Fluttershy's redesign, though. I thought her original Equestria Girls design was... I hate to say it, but it was not good. Just straight up, I didn't like it. I thought her hair and her face were really cute. Like, obviously, those are the most accurate parts, but that outfit... That outfit, just wow. Like, that is not Fluttershy at all. I guess the green and the pink fit, at least, but the skirt and those boots are not doing her any favors. And so, I ended up on Pinterest, as every artist does. I know a lot of people associate Fluttershy with the cottagecore aesthetic, and I see the vision. I get it. But me, personally, I, I only slightly disagree with it. I feel like the main two staples of cottagecore fashion, at least from my interpretation of it, is femininity and the use of natural colors, both of which I think Fluttershy identifies with, but anytime I look up cottagecore fashion on Pinterest, some of the results just don't scream this is a high schooler's outfit to me. I guess my personal headcanon for Fluttershy is that she'd have a very thrifty sense of fashion. She's a goodwill girly and she gets a lot of her wardrobe from different thrift stores in her area. She's always on the lookout for naturally colored items, but she also likes a pop of color here and there. Maybe that's also cottagecore now, but I don't know. 
You can probably see her whole outfit by now, but as you can see, I gave her a sweater cardigan, a long maxi skirt, and some Doc Martin Mary Janes with either leg warmers or just thick socks. And then I put a bunch of flowers in her hair because it's cute. I chose very long sleeved and long flowy garments because I think they help give off the impression that Fluttershy is shy and closed off, which is something the original design just did not achieve at all. All of the short sleeves, and I think especially the silhouette of the skirt, gave off the wrong impression about the character. The only thing I think they got right were the eyes and hair, which is funny because those are the only two things taken directly from the pony design. Though I am aiming for these redesigns to involve modern fashion, I still want to include each of the characters' cutie marks into their designs. Cutie marks are just such a staple of My Little Pony character design. Like, if you look at even the background characters in Equestria Girls, they all have their cutie marks somewhere on their outfits. And so, since I'm not really following any other Friendship is Magic character design rule, I wanted to include that one rule at the very least because, I mean, they're just too iconic. I can't take them away. I ended up turning Fluttershy's cutie mark into a pattern on her skirt because I really couldn't think of any other way to include it. I thought slapping it onto her sweater was just a bit tacky, so I settled for a more subtle way of including it in the design. So it's it's there, there's the butterflies. Drawing Fluttershy was honestly really easy up until I had to do the patterns for the skirt. That was so time consuming. In my last video, I also had to create some patterns and designs for one of my characters, but I gave up halfway just because I felt like I had no clue what I was doing. But I was determined to finish this girl, so I powered through, and I made like four or five different designs, and yeah, I did it. I finished the skirt, and I'm pretty happy about it. As for Fluttershy's Equestria Girl's backstory rewrite question mark, I don't know. These are more just like personal headcanons for the character. Also, for these redesigns, I'm keeping them as seniors in high school. I just realized I hadn't mentioned that until now, so yeah, that's important, I guess. In Friendship is Magic, Fluttershy lives in a cottage and basically runs an animal sanctuary, and I think Equestria Girl's Fluttershy is at the point where she knows she wants to work with animals, but she doesn't really have the opportunity to get it as a job quite yet. So she volunteers at her local animal shelters, and whenever she gets to college, she wants to major in zoology or wildlife biology so that she can have a job that lets her work with animals in the wild. I don't think she'd want to be a vet just because of how sad that job can be. Like, I think she thinks she wouldn't be able to handle it. Because lord, I wouldn't be able to either. That would make me too sad. Also, as for her body type, like I said, I was going to be changing them. I made Fluttershy tall and lanky just because, I don't know, she gave off those vibes. I don't think her outfit shows it off that well, but yeah, I don't know, that's what I was intending. And then I made her Pakistani just because, I don't know, that's what I thought the face looked like to me whenever I sketched it. There's not much reasoning beyond that. One last thing though, before I completely finish up, I do want to say that out of all of the designs I did for this video, I think Fluttershy's is the least accurate to her Friendship is Magic character. I started re-watching FIM in the middle of coloring this piece, and I realized, had I watched the show before I started this and had a more accurate perception of her character, I definitely would have done some different things with her redesign. That's not to say I think this design is bad and horrible and doesn't look like Fluttershy at all, because it definitely looks like her, it just isn't 100% accurate to my interpretation of the character, you know? Anyways, here is the finished Fluttershy. I am actually super happy with how she turned out. If there's anything you would have done differently, or if you have any different headcanons, just leave them in the comments. And that includes critiques of my artwork too, I'm always open to that. I just, ah, I love Fluttershy. Uh, but now let's just go ahead and get into the next one. The second character we will be redesigning is Pinkie Pie. Designing Pinkie Pie was a little more difficult than Fluttershy. I forgot to mention in the previous part of the video, but I actually relate to Fluttershy quite a lot. Her social anxiety and timidness are both something that I have, even if my problems just, you know, aren't as extreme as hers. So whenever it came time to design Fluttershy's outfit, I just kind of thought, what is an outfit I would wear that also suits Fluttershy's personality and aesthetic? And I mean, yeah, y'all saw the outfit. But other than the fact that I love colorful stuff and Pinky loves colorful stuff, I didn't really have much to go off of in terms of relatability with this girl. 
So compared to Fluttershy, it kind of felt like I was starting from square one. So, of course, as I did with all of these characters, I looked at her original outfit, and I knew there were a lot of things I wanted to change. The outfit feels too simple, too weird, like I, I don't really know what it's supposed to be. And I'm sorry for being such a hater, but the purple skirt just isn't it for me. I really don't think that color fits Pinkie at all. My initial thought for her outfit change was Decora. It's colorful, it's out there, it's extra, which are all things I think relate to Pinkie Pie. However, whenever I searched up some Decora examples on Pinterest, I realized that a full-on Decora outfit would just be hell on earth to draw. Just all the details and the intricacies on their outfits, I admire it so much and I think the outfits are really fun, but I'm tired. If I drew all those details, my hand would hurt like crazy and I- this drawing just would have taken me years to finish. But I also really wanted to give her that aesthetic just because it fits so well. So my solution was to take that aesthetic and just simplify it a little bit. Instead of going all out with the details like putting a ton of clips in her hair or a lot of keychains on her belt, I would take the elements that I like and dumb them down a bit. I really like when people add keychains to their belts or pants, like, uh, I don't know, I just, I think it's so cute when people do that. I think Pinky would definitely have more than one keychain, but I, I just gave her one for now. And it's a Mario question mark block, if y'all can't tell. Another staple of Decora seems to be decorating the absolute crap out of your hair. And it just, it fits Pinkie Pie so much, but I did not want to draw all those tiny little details, as I've already stated. So instead of giving her a ton of hair clips in her hair, I decided she'd have sprinkles because she works at a bakery. Duh. Side note, I just realized that line kind of makes it seem like the sprinkles in her hair are a mistake, like they accidentally get into her hair, but those are not the vibes I'm going for. I think she would very intentionally add the sprinkles in her hair just because she thinks they would look cute. Looking at her outfit as a whole, I wanted it to be very colorful and just very out there, and I think I accomplished that pretty well. I gave her a short-sleeved, tight-fitting t-shirt with a also tight-fitting cami top layered onto the t-shirt. I put the cutie mark on her cami top just because, I, I don't know, I just, I thought it fit. Honestly, that top is kind of giving me old Justice vibes, if any of y'all know what I'm talking about. Her skirt is supposed to be a pleated skirt, I kind of got lazy with the details of it, sorry. Uh, with a yellow petticoat underneath it because I know Pinky would be obsessed with the fluffiness of it. She would love it to death. And then I gave her some bows, some cute earrings, a belt, just a bunch of tiny little additions that Pinky would love. Her tight-fitting outfit and her skirt aren't too different silhouette-wise from the original Equestria Girls design, but I think the body type I gave her changed the look of it a lot. I ended up making Pinkie Pie short and plump, and by short I mean 5 foot 3. I honestly want Rainbow Dash to be the shortest out of all of the main six and my redesigns because I know that girl would have such a Napoleon complex, but that's going to be explored in part 2 of this video if it ever gets made. <laughs> I also made Pinkie black just because that's a really popular headcanon and I see it, so I drew it. And for the last design change, I put her hair up in a ponytail of sorts, just because I thought the long hair didn't fit as much as a short hair would. Shorter hair in character design typically means that a character is either short-tempered or energetic, and I thought this hair made her look like the latter, so yeah, I don't know, I made it short. As for my Pinkie Pie head cannons, she's been working at Mr. and Mrs. Cake's Bakery ever since she could get a worker's permit, and in the future she would love to either open up a bakery of her own or work as an event coordinator so she can take part in planning fun events. Her major is undecided, but ideally she would take all of the majors she wants at once because this girl is a powerhouse and cannot be stopped. And here is the final redesign. I... I love it. I think the art I made for it isn't the best, but the design overall is just... Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I really like it. Of course, let me know if you would have done anything differently. And now it's on to the next Equestria girly. The last redesign I'll be doing this video is Twilight Sparkle, the princess herself. And if I sound sick during this part of the video, it's because I am. 
Now, the process for Twilight's redesign felt a little different from the rest of the characters. See, for Fluttershy and Pinkie Pie, there were only two versions of their characters that I felt like I could take inspiration from. Their Equestria Girls character, and then their Friendship is Magic character. They're in completely separate worlds, but they both basically have the same personality, aesthetic, whatever else. They're basically the same character. But with Twilight, she has a lot of different versions or stages of her character that I could take inspiration from. We have Unicorn Twilight without an Equestria Girls design, we have Alicorn Twilight which has an Equestria Girls design, and then we have Human Twilight without a pony design, all of which I consider to be pretty separate characters. To solve this dilemma, I decided I would just pick my favorite out of all of these versions of Twilight. So I picked the Unicorn Twilight because honestly, that's just the one I'm most nostalgic for. I'm still gonna look at her original Equestria Girls design though because honestly, I think her original design is already really good. Like, thank the lord it is because she is literally the main character. I'm glad they at least got her right. I wanted Twilight's aesthetic to be super similar to her Equestria Girls design because I thought the colorful academia aesthetic is just so Twilight. It just, it feels so nerdy. I love it. I kept her pink bow tie, but I changed every other aspect of her original outfit just like very slightly. I gave her blue top longer sleeves and I added a sweater vest on top of it. On her original design, there's like an argyle pattern on her boots for whatever reason. And I wanted to keep that, so I put it on her sweater vest. I also don't think it's on screen quite yet, but I put her cutie mark on her bag and her skirt just because... I, I don't know, I didn't know where else to put it, so it's, it's on both of those places. I also gave her glasses because I thought they looked cute, and she's nerdy, and nerdy characters in cartoons usually have glasses. So, you know, they fit her design. And for her hair, I didn't change much, except I gave her an ahoge to replace where the unicorn horn would be. I just felt like her silhouette just looked bald without her unicorn horn. Like, it's too integral to her design. So, so yeah, there's the ahoge. Also, just so I could make sure this video would be uploaded by the time I wanted it to be uploaded by, I ended up only drawing a half body and one full body of her instead of two, like I did for the other characters. I feel a little bad about it, but... I don't know, I still think I got the design and personality across with these two, so I'm not- I'm not too worried about it. This piece honestly did not take me long to do at all. Like, Pinky and Fluttershy took me about three to four hours each, but she only took me about two hours, or like, maybe even one and a half. It- it wasn't that long. Last but not least, let me talk about headcanons. Since Twilight's whole personality is literally revolving around magic, both in the show and the movies, Thinking of a realistic major or interest for her to have was just a little difficult. I decided the closest thing I could think of to magic in real life is like space and black holes and I don't know, stuff like that. Honestly, a lot of physics in general is really fascinating to me. Maybe she'd study radiation, maybe she'd study quantum physics, just... I, I don't know. I feel like she'd have a really specific scientific interest that she could just go on and on about, and she is determined to study whatever it is that's her job. Also, this girl is going to the Ivy Leagues. She could get into Harvard with ease. I believe in that girl. Anyways, here is Twilight. I don't know if I want to say she's my favorite out of all of the redesigns so far, but actually, yeah, I'll say it. I, I think she's my favorite. I wish I put the tiniest bit more effort into the art I made for this, but I, I don't know, I, I still think it looks good. And now, on to the outro. And that's it for the redesigns of this video. Obviously, I haven't tackled all of the main six quite yet, but I have started sketching and thinking of ideas for the other three characters, and some other characters that I am obsessed with and will never ever shut up about. So if you want to see more Equestria Girls content, just let me know. If you've made it this far in the video, literally thank you so much. I'll be posting the photos of these designs on my Pinterest and Instagram, both are at Josta, if you want to see the photos in their full glory. I'm also really active on Instagram in general, so if you want more content from me, just follow me there. And I think that's going to be about it for this video, thanks for making it this far. If you're listening to this, here is a sneak peek of my Rainbow Dash redesign, just for you. I know the sketches are super rough, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> there it is. I'm also pretty sure I've been putting up some fan art on screen, so of course, go check out all of these artists. I really appreciate when people draw my characters, like seriously, 
I, ah, thank y'all for doing that. I don't really have anything else to say, so I guess I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!